Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. This is Vod Camera from Dreamlight. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the five keys to photorealism inside Dash Studio. This is not a photo. This is a Dash Studio render. And by the time this video is finished, you will understand the five keys to photorealism inside Dash Studio. And it's not what you think. So these five keys will make your renders look more realistic. Uh, and if you do not use them or don't know about them, you will keep struggling to get your renders to look as real as possible. So here we are inside Dash Studio and key number one has to do with high quality models. The thing is, you have to use the most realistic, the best looking, the most detailed models ever created. And the reason is by, well, we are used to looking at reality, right? We are used to looking at people or reality and we know how it looks. So it's all in the small details. So you got to use really, really high quality props for that. And let me demonstrate. This is a render of this uh, 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 Gaia character, which I just adore. It's one of the best looking uh, characters ever. But see, you know, she looks really, really good, uh, no matter what angle you throw at her, right? And the thing is, this is, you know, it's all in the details. Because if we throw in a character that does not have as many details, let me do that. So here I've added the basic Genesis 8 female and everything else is the same. All right. Well, we don't have the same pose, but it's the same uh, type of, you know, scene and all, everything is the same. And the only thing that differs is our character is different and she doesn't have the same pose. But you can see she doesn't look as nearly as realistic. All right. And it has to do with details. Which brings us to the next key, which is materials, okay, surfaces. And the thing is, what's wrong with 3D art is that it's so perfect. And the more you can get away from that, add imperfections, tweak things, so they look a little bit more, well, realistic, right? I mean, reality ain't perfect. Our left and right side is not the same. There are blemishes there are you know uh, uh, imperfections the blood vessels in in the skin right there's things that just make it look real and if you don't do that if you don't spend time adding that it will not look real she looks more well plastic right as opposed to our Gaia character which just uh, looks amazing and if you go really close, let's do that. Let's go really, really close here on the skin. Let me turn off camera depth of field. All right, so we can see things uh, a little bit more smoother here. And if you can watch this now, you can see just the incredible amount of detail that is here. I mean, the skin has imperfections, flaws, uh, details that are not present in a standard figure things how like the bones here the collarbones uh, imperfections and blemishes uh, dot spots on the skin blood vessels right all that I mentioned is all present in this very character and that's what makes her almost for real because she has all those imperfections so while key number one is using high quality models is not enough you got to have them look and react to light in a uh, uh, natural way, right? So you got to have all those imperfections in there. And this is something you can pretty much get ready from certain DAS models. There are tweaks you can do on your own. There are settings you can play with. Uh, there are, you know, texture uh, things you can do texture wise. And there's a lot you can, you know, tweak and add to make things less perfect. And when you combine those, when you see the, uh, you know, skin folding here on her knee or here, you can feel the blood vessels. You can see the, uh, the, uh, the tall um, bone structure. 
you can see those you know I mean it's so detailed that it looks more realistic right and this is even more difficult to achieve when you uh, are rendering people because we go extremely used to look at people right um, so other elements may be easier to get real but people that's really really you know um, you gotta pay attention to the details right all right so we can see here I've rendered a little bit longer now you can really feel the imperfections on the skin and how it just flaws it just looks amazing all right so let's look at number key uh, three uh, key number three and that my friend has to do with gravity all right and gravity means that when you're opposing people or things for that matter pay attention to weight how things should deform under weight and how they should rebalance under weight for instance her shoulders are kind of um, arching a little bit here towards the camera right they are not just static while this base character has no sense of uh, you know natural weight so to speak and you can see that more clearly when we have a more wider view here uh, you know there is like gravity is kind of lacking a little bit here right so if you don't pay attention to those elements let me just switch over to texture preview uh, and you start you know bending uh, the body let's do that right now real quick right it it lacks that sense of you know it just looks stiff right i mean nobody would have that kind of um pose and it's like let me just show you how we can break things that looks pretty unnatural right <laughs> there's i mean the deformation is very robotic at best and that doesn't give realism so no matter how good your character is uh, the, the model itself uh, how great textures you have or, or surface settings or materials all the tweaks uh, I've mentioned if you lack gravity in your renders it's not gonna look natural and gravity is not by the way just people it can be a car how you know how the, um, the the car body is resting upon the wheels how the wheels are reacting to the terrain there is so much stuff you can you know adjust to make things a little bit more realistic all right so which brings us to key number four which is lighting key number four is lighting but not in the sense you might think because here's the thing i mean we have a pretty cool light set up right here now it looks well kind of professional light but if we make this now ugly or just more plain let's do that so here we have a single light just from the front and she doesn't look less real I mean, we changed the light, we made it a little more, well, it's still kind of like a fashion style lighting, right? But she doesn't look less real. Why? Because reality has nothing to do with light. You heard that right. I mean, you can't, I mean, if you take a photo of something that is bad, lit in a bad way, it doesn't look less real, right? So lighting, sorry to break it for you, but lighting is not you know one of the secrets to photorealism it is however one of the keys to having great looking art but that's a totally different story with realism it has nothing to do with lighting however lighting can be used to hide certain elements like if part of your image ain't top notch you can hide it in shadows right so you can use light to enhance the things in your image that look good and behave realistically and you can hide the stuff that ain't that is pretty cool right now to prove my point let's make this even more ugly right let's uh just do very harsh shadows i mean females uh, uh dislike harsh lighting right but she still looks realistic I mean, if you get closer here to the body and you can uh, follow here on the face, you can see that she looks very, whoops. Let me turn off camera depth of field. 
here we go all right she still looks realistic all right now the, sh the shadow may not be so realistic but she still looks realistic and that's because all the other rules are in place now having that said though you cannot break natural light. If shadows start to behave in an unnatural way, like that sharp, that, that is not realistic, right? So you still gotta have realistic type of lighting, for sure, but that does not break the model, so to speak. And now we can just go back to our, the light we had a moment ago to make things look a little more pretty. All right. So this brings us to the last key and that has to do with filters and post work. And the thing is, you know, it's not about completely changing your, your images or other stuff, but it's about enhancing. And again, you can also hide things with post work, right? You can make things, uh, uh, you can change the things that are not looking perfect. Uh, but you can also do a very cool concept that I called the third layer. And it has to do with the fact that when you blend, you know, um, let's say you, you, you blend, you have a photo in, in your background and then you add a, a character and you want them to look good combined. When you add a third component to this, like a filter, then those two elements are equalized. All right, so it's a cool neat trick though, small bonus for you. Now, so what can you do inside, uh, let's say Photoshop? So thing is, uh, just before going into Photoshop here, just mentioning the stuff I wanna mention, um, there is obviously more to gravity, like the hair. Uh, there is more to surfaces, like you know outfits, uh, how skin behaves, how naturally all the other stuff look like, how you know the the settings of the of the hair and all that. So it's a lot more than just the character, right? Gravity uh, is something you got to pay attention to, regardless of what you're doing in your image or part uh, you're, you're uh, adjusting, right? So uh, one of the very simplest things you can do inside Photoshop is to add a quick filter, and that really changes. Like I mentioned, if you this uh, um, background is an HDR map inside Dash Studio. So it's a kind of 360 degree photo that also adds lighting. And then there's lighting in addition to that. But um, that render, render looks like this. I'm gonna show you that. This is the straight render from Dash Studio. And this is the render slightly enhanced inside Photoshop. So it's not a lot. I, I could do a lot more. Um, there is also an, uh, an artifact here on the HDR map, so don't worry about that. But the thing is, uh, this uh, image looks much better with the filter on than without. And it has to do with uh, multiple things. One of them, like I mentioned, you add a third layer that combines them two together, right? But you also make things less, again, perfect. You don't have to have everything looking perfectly neat going from a perfect dark to perfect bright you break th these things up a little bit you make them more natural in this case i'm just using a quick filter here from nick collection um, and there is a lot more you can do you can paint on skin you can paint on hair you can paint on uh, outfits like i said you can hide things you can correct errors you can do a lot of stuff right and frankly that's all the keys Right, so you have the high quality model, models, you have high quality materials and material settings, surfaces, how everything behaves, right? You have gravity, posing, how, you know, uh, is the weight, a sensation of weight applied to your uh, characters or vehicles or whatever you are rendering? Uh, is there a sense of um, uh, motion? If something is uh, light, does it flow? Like here, the hair, right? Um, how are you know everything else behaving i mean all the small details fingers hands um it's all combined lighting enhancing you know the scene uh for sure not making real though but you can also add stuff like lens glares or uh, uh glow or, or um sometimes also called bloom uh, or other imperfections to make things look real and then finally we have post work and filters. So guys, that, that combined 
are the five keys I use to make my renders look almost almost for the real. And there is always that you know we can always spend. Um, it's about you know uh, it's about the time you spend as well. I mean you could spend like a gazillion days on your image and making it truly perfect perfect you know. I myself like quick results. I'm a, a, a fast guy. I like instant results, and so I do things really quickly. But yet I achieve very good results because I follow these specific rules. Now, guys, if you want to learn more about Photorealism inside Dash Studio, then I encourage you to check out our uh, one dollar seven day trial of our Super 3D Art Quick Start. So right now we are running a special series and this quick start has a kind of like a base section, if you will, with a lot of, you know, stuff that you will learn here by just browsing these videos uh, that will give you the base of, you know, photorealism and understanding of lighting and all that. But then uh, and there is also here at the bottom, we have weekly releases here as well. So that you get a lot of stuff here included, right? But after eight days, it you know transforms into the main membership, and then you get access to these uh, uh, extremely cool and large libraries of uh, content. That's four years packed of content. There's like over 600 videos just here, right? Um, and you got the female, uh, the sci-fi, and the male art. But here in the female art club. We are right now running a specific series about photorealism. And each week, just in this club, we are releasing two uh, videos each week, right? Uh, one is the weekly feedback, and then we have uh, the main videos. And if I just look at the main videos here in the main section, you can see that we, we are covering right now, uh, as of May 8 here, uh, photorealism and hair, right? Also different light kits and uh, more about photorealism. And you know, getting creative with your renders and all that. Posing, super advanced posing techniques, how to get them to really look perfect. And we have a lot of stuff in here. If you just browse here, there is you know a gazillion you know uh, videos here. Uh, advanced photorealism here. More. I mean, there is it just never ends, right? So if that is your that's something you are on your mind, if you want to make your renders look better, then this is definitely something for you. And if you want to do you no know, boudoir type of renders, you have that covered. Everything is in here. So I don't need to wait through this. It goes dates back to 2018. If you scroll down here, 2018, it's it's a lot of content, right? So, and even here in the extra content section, you get additional stuff here and really cool uh, light sets, HDR packages, and all that. Everything is included. And Back here in the uh, Super 3 Quick Start, like I said, after eight days, it uh, turns into the full uh, uh, membership, and you also ha have access to the uh, Sci-Fi Club. This is another insanely huge and popular, uh, you know, club with tons of materials, and you know, blending I've, with photos, adding airships to photos. So photorealism is not just about you know characters; it's also uh, vehicles or airships. How do you blend that? How do you really make it look like it's in the sky and blend perfectly? Um, and you know, look at this. It never truly ends. It's so much stuff. You can just pick anything you like here and just you know, uh, what dig into that, right? Rob droids in streets and all that. We have you covered. There is so much cool stuff in here. It's almost ridiculous, right? So I've been busy, yeah. And see, look at that. <laughs> I can just browse and browse and browse and browse and browse. It never ends, right? You have all access to all that after eight days in your Super 3D Art Quick Start. So that is pretty much it, my friend. So I encourage you to um, take a look at the Quick Start here and uh, read more about it. And just grab the one $1 seven day trial while it's there. Uh, it's an incredible, incredible, incredible deal. That is insane. You cannot find anything like this anywhere else. So if you want to do more realistic renders, this is the place to be. So with that said, I think I covered pretty much everything I wanted to cover in today's video. I hope this was helpful. Now get out there, have fun, and I'm looking forward to seeing your renders. All right.